Welcome to the channel, everybody. I'm going to be talking about an animated show called Voltron Legendary Defender. I got a kick out of this show. It's supposed to be a reboot, sort of. In a way, it's like the third, I think, major rehash or second. There were a couple of others. It started in 2016 on Netflix. It was actually DreamWorks. Uh, helped with it a shot at a real epic story that plays out pretty well over the series my general impression is pretty good i enjoyed it i don't give major spoilers or plot lines but this you know it's an animated show it's been out and i might just get a little deep here and there but not too much we have famous characters from my childhood i love the voltron series when i was younger Always got a kick out of it. It has this blend of anime and some of the tropes that come with it are pretty ridiculous now when you look back at it. They included some of it, but I think it's updated enough to, you know, have an impact on people and get people's attention. They decided to do a pretty epic story. Lots of storylines mixing together, subplots. It culminates at the end with a gigantic epic story it's almost too unwieldy and that would be my little negative at the beginning the nitpicks are silly and it's like okay if you have technology and it has a guy's arm and there's a space in between because there's a magnetic tether things like that kind of like you know and little nitpicks about some of the comedy but those are just like minor things but i think if I was going to get a little serious about where the story goes and then it starts to balloon out and goes into places which are sometimes fascinating. Some of the standalone episodes are really good. There's a, oh, it's a weirdness. Like I understand it from when I run my adventures and I do high level stuff or cosmic uh, storylines. They went for it. They did a good job. But here and there, I think it lost its way. Now that rounds that up in a, in a general sense. Voltron, the legendary defender, the updated look. I prefer the older look to an extent. I prefer the older sword. But you can't beat where they brought the animation in that sense. The fluidity of it, the battles are really incredible. Some of the ship designs are cool. They're a little different than you'd expect. And I'm down with how they filmed it. Some... Standalone, well, not, some concepts and even in some standalone episodes are themes themselves with um, reporting on things or several storylines that are like D&D &D adventures and you're playing a video game. So they have a lot. You got eight seasons. So I think in total is like um, over 70 episodes. It starts off and for the first five seasons, I'm going to say it's great. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I'm um, catching up with the characters. They're presenting them in a different way, exploring some of the nuances of them. Just really good blend of when are we going to see Voltron? What is he going to fight? How the lions are uh, cooperating or not? If they're going to release or show a new power or ability they can do, and that journey is done really well. Excellent, as a matter of fact. Some of it gets a little bogged down, and they're going to throw a little comedy in there. Some of the kid factors are there. But it doesn't really bother me. And in, being that I turned 50, I don't really see myself growing up in that way. I, I, I don't care if it's anime, cartoons, or whatever. Give me a good story, and I'll go with it as much as I can. I, I really was with this show. Uh, somewhat to get through, but... Like I said, you got a good blend of how they're interacting with the characters, bringing new ones in. They've actually done a good job of making some interesting villains and drawing out those storylines. Granted, when I said the story gets a little unwieldy and it happens here and there for the first five seasons, I would say, but it's so rare. Grand skate, uh, scope, really good uh, show of... Uh, development of the powers and stuff it was, it was pretty good but from five to the end for season eight is where i think they got a little lost in their 
their past. It's a long story to go over, and there's a lot of really great things in it. It doesn't ruin it. It gets a little off base. It gets a little, you know, it's trying to do transcendental things and um, astral plane things and just stuff that I love, but the tone, the shift, the way it was building, it seems maybe there was a, maybe it's for good, you know, probably for good because I'm just one person. But the way they changed it up, it almost seemed like a, I would, I would note it as, oh, showrunners change like one of those type of feels between five and eight and still good still loving where it's going but it gets wow it goes goes out there you're talking about uh defender of the universe and it tries to live up to its name you look at the old show and you're like okay he's fighting spaceships and a row beast every week they're gonna um go to a, a, a certain planet and etc this is saying well, first we're going to show the Earth and, uh, you know, neighboring planets, that type thing. There are alien races. Five misf misfits get on a, you know, an adventure and they get, boom, they get thrust into this thing and their destiny has called upon them as the paladins of Voltron. 10,000 years ago, Voltron disappeared. The old king of a certain planet had to disband them the new paladin is going to bring them back because the evil's growing too strong there goes your five protagonists and up to seven or eight to ten at the end but it's done well you can follow it and stuff it doesn't get too unwieldy you, you, you know enough from the first four or five seasons that you're solid with everybody and even when they bring in a new person there's only one or two minor instances but from the beginning, I like the voice acting, the direction, like the way it's filmed. I don't know what you call that in uh, anime. I probably should, but I'm stoned and uh, mushrooms too. There's a style that it tries to revive. It breathes life into it. It gives you a, a good um, sample of everything. And in certain standalone episodes, they dial it back or up it a little bit. So pretty good on, the, on, on that part too. The um, Evil Empire thing kind of like loses me a little bit since they had 10,000 years and how the villains and villainesses sort of um, escalate things. And like I said, up to season five, I'm all in. I'm like, wow, this is, what is this? Oh, and then from five to eight, you're just like, well, okay. So not only is the fate of the universe at stake we have fate of reality and all the realities and you get into a multiverse and get right up my alley and i'm so happy it was done and good to see it done and you know people taking chances but it could have been could use a little tighter writing could have had you know if they would have hired me i would have probably you know showed it up or did a little screen work on a screenplay work on it but it's a joy. I'm happy I finally got through it. Something on Netflix, you're looking at a friend. Um, recently get updated and gave me uh, all the information to log in and start watching stuff because I gave up on Netflix a while ago. Just a really refresh, refreshing time to go back. I didn't want to go all the way back to the first season. and So I, I wound up doing that anyway, you know, because you're missing things and so it's that epic though that much of a you know storyline goes through everything it's it's deep and like i said you might lose yourself around season five but i think it's worth it this is a fun show it's got some lessons learned growth um childhood to adulthood you know the old good and bad tropes are there the misunderstood the um you know, the hero gone wrong. You got eight seasons to do it. I think they did it very well. I think there's um, a difference between some of the seasons. And like I said, I might rate the last three seasons as it uh, wasn't as good. But where are you going to um, go when you've got such an epic storyline? you got to take your chances. And I think they did it well. 
I look at some of the controversy around it. I think it's ridiculous with LGBT, um, you know, community stuff and fans and fan behavior. I think it's all bullshit. But now is the day you can reach out to anybody on, on social media, tell them you don't like their movie, tell them they're a shitty actor, you didn't like them in your part. And this is fair game, I guess. This is just, you know, maybe it's not something I would do right away, but... You know, look, I was pissed off what they did with Luke Skywalker in those fucking movies. I didn't go nuts on it, but here and there, I was like, I, I, I was like cheering the comments on that, that were pertinent to me and how I felt. I think this is almost the same way. Look, people are going to love or hate it. There's not a lot of um things that I notice. So I think it's just, just about fucking screaming in the void and whatever, but... The, the 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 heart of the show is there. It, it it comes across. I think it's won some awards here and there too, which is good. I think there are comics that had to get involved with it. Um, I think there's a good place for this, especially looking at um some shows that are so long lived. Like I love Archer. It's animated and it's adult most comedy and i you know you don't see those seasons going so long and where's my eight seasons of you know the x-men or they were there back in the day and you had obviously batman's long run which when you break it into its compartments because it went from one thing to another <laughs> but i still consider it like an 11 year animation this top-notch Good voice acting. The themes come across. I think it has a great plot line that survives everything and it comes through in the end. I love that they went cosmic, went really for the full tilt. Could I think I could have done it better? Probably in a ego way, maybe. But I would be curious to know what the general sense is. There's a confusion that you can get into with what's going on and when it's happening. Because, like I said, when you're going to go cosmic and threaten realities and dealing with time and space, it gets a little weird. I didn't know how things sort of happened. I had to go back one episode. And that's the only real nitpick I'm giving, and that's from season five to eight. Again, some standalone episodes that really uh, point out some ingenuity, some great ideas, some old ones done well. You're going to get to love the characters. I think there's no doubt about that. The growth of them. There's a lot to love in this show. So I'm going to give uh, Voltron, Legendary Defender, a really highly recommended show. Eight seasons, and like you'll get through them. It's not uh, they're not an hour and a half each. Uh, you know, 22 minute episodes, whatever. But done pretty good and fun. You know, I, I'll take some of the little comedy that was a little, um, little too immature. Well, image, not immature, but just not my style. And just get through it. You don't have to muscle through the show. You don't feel like, oh, this is, you know, um, a chore. It really gets you through. It carries you through. And I'm, I was surprised that it was uh, DreamWorks. What is that, like a Disney collaboration? Because it's an American show from Japanese animation, I believe, company, that type thing. And I didn't hear nothing about um, behind-the-scenes stuff. When I first heard about it, I thought the synopsis was good, and I wasn't disappointed. Highly recommended. Pretty fun romp. Voltron, I mean, I don't know if many people are fans as me, but I get a kick out of it from my childhood. There's, uh, you know, Transformers. There are certain things that you really get into when you're younger. This was definitely one of them. And to see it done well, so well, even with things I might not like, and I say that a lot, maybe on some of these podcast if anybody fucking listens is that i don't care to disagree with what's on the screen if it's not what i would have envisioned or if it's not what i wanted that's part of the journey just do it well and i think that's the real hallmark of indie films you know you don't need the high quality high all the money you can show uh the, you know the true worth of it the talent in there and then like some of these shorts they do, they get promoted and they get movies made. I don't know about the 
industry of like who's a director of these things that you know and stuff like that but i guess you got to give credit to them in that sense um uh, i can go through the voice actors but no one's going to know really who they are but steven yoon is from was from walking dead i know him a couple others maybe you know but you don't get like a director type thing when i want to give credit for you know something that was done really well and like i said you got eight seasons you got plots under plots um something that comes out in the end i don't give two you know like i said spoilers but it's a reality shattering end of the universes type uh climax that just you know you have to take the ride to get there i wouldn't be surprised if some people had quit like a season five we've gotten so much joy so much fun out of it but if you get through it i'd be curious to see your comments see if uh, there's any um disagreements here and there maybe even going to a more in-depth there's a lot to get into with this and even to break it up into seasons would be interesting too if i have the fucking time anyway hope everybody's doing good you know we're still in tough times here and there um most of the people i know are still looking for to get vaccines and waiting to see the outcome of those things but i wish everybody the best much love to all take care everybody